You said that from a very early age that you always knew that you wanted to lead a company. You said that you wanted to become a CEO and some people reacted surprised that you would publicly say that. Were you surprised that people had that reaction to you stating your ambitions and do you think that's unique to women that that potentially uncomfortable relationship to ambition? I felt it was really important at that point in time to declare and someone asked me, well, what if you don't get it? And I said, the thought never crossed my mind. Because I was very driven to achieve that goal. And, uh, and I was willing to put in the time and the energy to do what it takes, not only to get there, but also to be successful there. So it was, for me, it was a matter of just communicating a goal. I don't think women should be afraid of declaring themselves. Um, what's the worst that can happen? You've also talked throughout your career about the importance of planning, that yes. so often we create strategic business plans, but we don't do that in our personal lives. Why do you think that is? I do know that women think that they join a company and the company will take care of them, as opposed to taking charge. And I believe women need to take charge. They've got to recognize that they can't get there by themselves, that they're going to need uh, mentors and sponsors and build relationships that will help them get to where they want to be. And they have to give back to those relationships as well. I, I use the term networking is working because I don't know if women really appreciate how important that is. But, but if you step back and you say, yes, we're strategic about brands and we're strategic about companies, now is the time for women to be strategic about themselves. And I believe that they'll have much better outcomes in terms of advancement. Describe an instance where you had a plan and a goal and you encountered your first detour and obstacle and how did you readjust to still keep moving forward? Yeah. Well, I think that you know, plans aren't you know, completely baked. You have to have a bit of flexibility in your life for curveballs or like you say, setbacks uh, or new opportunities that come along. For example, uh, I remember back in my career, my husband came home and said, I have an opportunity to be a CEO of a fruit business in California. And I, at the time, was a director of marketing for Nestle. So I went to the president of Nestle and I said, I have good news and bad news. The good news is I want to stay with the company. The bad news is uh, my husband's been transferred to Bakersfield and I would love to you know, live with him. And the next thing I knew, I was transferred to the ice cream business at Nestle. I was promoted. And so it was a great opportunity for him, but I also was able to turn it into a great opportunity for me as well, because I, I understood directionally what my plan was. And I, I had a, a good relationship that helped open another door for me. What has been the best career advice that you've received over the years? The best career advice I've received is the importance of building relationships. And I really recognize that now as a CEO. You can't run a company by yourself. Uh, you need a multiplier effect. And that's inspiring and motivating and leading people to do amazing things. That requires building relationships and relationships of trust because you can't lead if people don't trust you. And so that's the best advice I got. You've had an incredibly successful career, but you also have a huge priority uh, on family as well, raising yes. two daughters, your marriage, and the like. What's been the toughest sacrifice that you've had to make given those very, very big goals? And what I talk to younger women about is the importance of work-life integration. Now having raised two daughters and have had a wonderful career path, the importance of being able to set clear priorities in the moment as life happens is, is so critical to success. I made some mistakes in terms of what was a priority at certain periods of time, and I learned from them and then reapplied. So I think it's one of those things that if you think about integration, it's dynamic, it's not static. And you just need to address a situation and handle it. How do you define power? <laughs> I've given a lot of thought to power, and I believe that leadership is service, and there's power in giving. And that service, 
for me is to consumers, it's to customers, it's to shareholders. And, and there is a power involved in getting people very excited about what they do and to unleash their potential. And to me, that's the greatest contribution a CEO can make.